People heard them say that a paper passport fell out of one of the towers and was picked up by a police officer on the street. This plane flies into the building, explodes with jet fuel out of the guy's jacket, goes through the fireball, through the side of the plane, out of the burning building, out of the fire shooting out, and comes down to the ground unscathed. But something happened. For six months they reported they had this passport. Boy, we've got it. We've got the proof. And then the guy stood up and was alive in the Middle East, and they pulled it and said, oh, that was a mistake. He wasn't a hijacker, and the story just disappeared. So what about the hijackers? It's the funniest thing, but at least nine of them are still alive. Walid Al-Sheri is a Saudi Airlines pilot in Casablanca, Morocco. Whale M. Al-Sheri is alive and well. Abdulaziz Alamari is a Saudi Airlines pilot living in Saudi Arabia. Mohand Al-Sheri is alive in Saudi Arabia. Khalid Al-Madar is a computer programmer in Mecca. Salam Al-Hamzi works at a chemical plant in Yanbo, Saudi Arabia. Saeed Al-Ghamdi is training to be a pilot in Tunis. Ahmed Al-Nami is an administrative supervisor for Saudi Airlines. And last but not least, Mohammed Atta's father claimed to receive a phone call from his son on September 12th. Fourteen of the hijackers based their training in Florida, and the five that allegedly hijacked Flight 77 lived in a motel right outside the gates of the NSA. Not to mention, the official autopsy report for Flight 77 does not list the hijackers. And the opening paragraph makes no mention of their absence. After these discrepancies were pointed out, FBI Director Robert Mueller brushed it off, saying that the hijackers were using stolen passports and may not have had tickets, so there's no way to know who they actually were. So, if there's no proof that the hijackers were members of Al-Qaeda, or if they were even on the plane in the first place, what justification do we have for bombing Afghanistan? We have a Republican here tonight who's uh, here to prove this is and should be a nonpartisan issue. I'd like to hear from Carl Schwartz, please. Carl. What they found inside the FBI actually came from ongoing drug investigations dating back to 1998. And I heard uh, the other day, uh, just a minute ago, Mr. Thompson brought up Argentina, the company that had the contract with the Taliban is Brightest Corporation. They are from Argentina. On September 9, 2003, they won a lawsuit in our Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. They had been tied up in the Texas courts since 1996. They won $500 million in a judgment for interference of contract in Turkmenistan. The only remaining thing was to take the Taliban and Brightus out. And then we control it all. We control the Caspian Basin oil. We have the pipeline to get it to the sea. The oil and gas in the Caspian Basin in current dollars is worth somewhere between 11 and $12 trillion. If you look at who was on the 9-11 Commission, on the Democrat side, who was directly benefiting, uh, Mr. Ben Venice law firm was the law firm that kept Brightest tied up. They're also the law firm that lost the lawsuit uh, when it went to the Supreme Court and uh, the Fifth Circuit. They kept them tied up at least from 1998. They're involved in Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan in about 20 different ways. Uh, you got the guy, Field, uh, no, Thompson, the Republican governor, former governor of Illinois. He is sitting on the board of FMC. They have an oil and gas subsidiary. They make equipment. They're selling a lot of it overseas in the Caspian. Jamie Gorlick, I thought she was going to be a go-getter. I mean, I was rooting for her because she acted like she knew what she was doing. Uh, she sits on the board of Schlumberger, which is a competitor to Halliburton. Just within two weeks prior to the 9-11 Commission saying Sine died and handing it over to the President and Congress to change our rights some more, which is what I think they plan to do, uh, Schlumberger finally comes forward and admits they're having record profits in this last quarter, and they're doing a lot of big bucks business in the Caspian Basin. If you look at the reality that Brightus had a contract with the Taliban, we had landlocked oil and gas deals, we had to get it to the ocean, we had people actually doing business in Pakistan. You literally have to look at 9-11 and all of those foregoing issues as inseparable. There is your Pearl Harbor. 
I call them financial terrorists. I don't know what you would call them. <laughs>